This is Stolen TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, and welcome to today's first edition of October Oilers coverage on the channel as we get set for that season opener that is just now 10 days away from things getting underway at last. Ooh, it is so dang close at this point. I can definitely feel it coming up, and it is getting closer because... The Edmonton Oilers are making roster moves left, right, and center day after day after day here now. And of course, we've gone through several preseason games. So after game five, the Oilers have now made a multitude of moves entering this afternoon here on Sunday. And we will talk about them in just a short second. But if you're new to the channel, folks, what I want you to take the next five, ten, whatever it takes me to do this video minutes to consider is to just simply think about subscribing, stay in tune for everything Edmonton Oilers the rest of the way home this year. I'd love to have you along. We are closing in on 9,000 subscribers now, currently 81 subscribers away from there. Yeah, I know one live stream and we could literally be there, which is absolutely nuts. Folks, however, I could take up your time talking all about me, or we could talk, simply put, about the Edmonton Oilers this morning. This afternoon, it was a hard Saturday night last night, don't mind me, uh, despite being in bed at 11 o'clock. Sure. Um, anyway, Xavier Borgo, you've got Seth Griffith, Noah Philp, Michael Kesselring, Phil Kemp, and Olivier Rodrigue all assigned to the Bakersfield Condors today. The big news here out of this is that Seth Griffith cleared waivers and indeed sticks with the Edmonton Oilers organization. You can say obviously what you want about Seth Griffith, but the biggest thing you can say about him is he is one of the AHL's top tier players that is getting very little time in the NHL. And there was that risk that somebody was going to be like, you know what, this is the guy we need on our roster this year just to fill out that 13th, 14th forward situation, right? We have an injury to start the season, so he'll slot in on the fourth line, whatever you want to say. However, Griffith doesn't get that chance now with any other team, but he still gets to stick around and will more than likely be called upon by the Edmonton Oilers here within the first 10 games at some point should there be an injury to somebody on the main NHL roster. Borgo, that was a uh, that was a foregone conclusion that it was going to be a given he was going to be in the AHL to start the season. Obviously, yeah, there was talk about the roster and how to configure it with the 150 or $165 you're trying to get to within the cap and stuff. Borgo was never part of that math. Obviously, Dylan Holloway was the man that was part of that math and so for Burgo, he gets his chance to go pro and really show what he's about and make noise throughout the season to come on up, right? He will be up at some point this year, I guarantee, if he continues to have a good go in the AHL. For Noah Philp, I think Bob Stoffer said it best. This is a guy that we don't have world-beater expectations on by any mind. If he turns into a fourth-line centerman, right-hand shot for the Oilers, that is the absolute best-case scenario. And of course, you know what, he had a strong camp too. Yeah, I think he was pretty strong in those rookie games. Main camp, I don't think any of the AHL caliber players were really out there owning it. Obviously, there were a couple guys that had good camps, but at the end of the day, they didn't have good enough camps to make the NHL, and they're still cut 10 days before opening night. So that's another factor in this. However, you know, Philip, a very exciting guy to watch and see what happens. Michael Kesselring, we'll see what happens with him in the AHL this year. Be interested to see what he can do. Obviously, Phil Kemp, same there too. He's a guy, depth piece for the organization, but it would be nice to see him kind of take that step forward this year. And speaking of steps forward this year, you absolutely have to hope, both just for everybody that's kind of grown attached to Ollie here in net for the Oilers, and secondary just for him himself, is simply put, Olivier Rodrigue goes out there and absolutely dominates. I think that's the only word you're looking for. Dominates, annihilates the competition, whatever you want to say. And just absolutely goes out there and owns his game this year. Because if he does, he'll stick around. If not, this could be the final time we see Olivier Rodrigue cut from Edmonton Oilers camp. Two more players were released from their PTOs and will report to the Bakersfield Condors, that being Alex Peters 
and Luke Esposito. So these guys were on AHL only deals. The Oilers gave them PTOs and they are up and gone back to sunny California to hang out in Bakersfield and enjoy what will be one heck of a loaded roster down there in Bakersfield, right? You got Borgo, Griffith, Philp, Kesselring, Kemp, not to mention everybody else that has joined them down in Bakersfield. There's a lot of talent on that AHL squad for the Oilers this season. I promise you that. And there's one more man that will join them hopefully after today and by noon tomorrow. And that is Greg McKegg, who is placed on waivers today by the Oilers for the purpose of assignment to the Bakersfield Condors. Now, second to this is we do not see, well, Dmitry Samarukov's name in here. And I think there's a lot of worry that you got to try and sneak him in when there's way too many people on waivers. So simply put, nobody claims them and the Oilers get away scot-free, risking it for the biscuit to try and get to that 21-man roster. Now, Elliot Friedman, we're just going to quickly take a quick look. Everybody from waivers yesterday cleared, so there's no Oilers waiver claim. There's nothing to be uh, to be aware of at this point, so that's good news. And folks, I think that's really all there is to really talk about in this video is just a simple, quick Waivers update for the Oilers. This is by far their largest cuts to camp so far. A total of nine players assigned or on waivers at this point. So for the Oilers, it'll be interesting now to see what happens going into tomorrow, right? That's every day into the next is now kind of getting into that weird territory for the Oilers where you got to kind of wait and see what's going to happen today. On the docket for the NHL, there's a total of three games. So I'd assume that waivers aren't going to be as active tomorrow or they might be even more active for everybody. And then the Oilers, of course, they are broadcast on television t tomorrow night at 7 p.m., a home game against the Vancouver Canucks on Sportsnet 1. I'll have a little bit of live coverage, but I don't think that'll hurt too much uh, people's feelings if I'm live tomorrow because we'll just simply be talking about the Oilers as you're watching them on television for the first time this preseason Folks, I'm Tyson, the Stall Indie TV. Thank you so much for tuning in to this afternoon's edition. Like you can see, I'm still I'm going for a nap after this. It's been a long morning of doing nothing so far, but I will catch you guys, of course, if there's any other news later today. If not, we will talk tomorrow and we will get set for the Canucks and Oilers preseason game number six at 7 o'clock tomorrow, a home game for the Oilers live on TV at long last. I'm... Tyson to stall any TV. Folks, I hope you took the time to consider hitting that subscribe button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Sorry, I always I always blank out that I should try and hark back to that at the end of the videos because I tell you to take the time to consider it. If you have, thank you very much. If you haven't, that's completely fine. Come back for the next video anyway, and we'll talk some more Edmonton Oilers soon. I am up on Oda here.